Hey guys, got another knife review for you here. This is the Diamondback 45, and today we'll be looking at the Caracara 2 in G10 by Bird Knives. And here we go. Let's dive right in, why don't we? Now, of course, Bird Knives being the uh, high-value brand owned by Spyderco. Uh, overseas produced. And a couple of the specs here. We have a 3 and 3 quarters inch blade. And our weight is four and a quarter ounces, so thirty dollar delica or uh, thirty dollar endura. Dare I say? Uh, of course, you know it's not going to compare to the endura. It's just uh, endura is a superior knife. But uh, let's get uh, the ergonomics on here. It fits pr fits really well in the hand. Uh, you have a jimped thumb ramp on the back here, which is really functional, and you've got two options here with the grip. Uh, you can ride your index finger down here or you can hike it up here on this jimped area here. That gives you really good grip, really good control over the blade. Let's come down here on the back spacers milled out. Um, ergonomically I don't think it does much. It doesn't really grip the palm when you're holding it. It doesn't dig into the palm there. Reverse grip, not really. So I don't know if it's more it's for more for aesthetic appeal, excuse me, or um, uh, just to cut out some weight, you know, so however you want to go with that, but uh, let's get down in on our handle here, and we have texturized G10, uh, medium to medium light on the texturing. Uh, we have uh, torque screws here. Uh, T6 to take it apart, and T8 on the pivot pin. Uh, went over our, uh, our half back spacer uh, milled out. We have it's a lock back design. I'll show that in gauge for you. The locking bar. There you go. David Bowie detent. This is really good uh, if you're wearing gloves. Help you find that detent. You still can with gloves, but it just boom. It's right there. Really helps you find that pocket clip. Uh, pocket clip's a pocket clip, right? Well, I'm not a huge fan of uh, Spyderco pocket clips or this style anyway. Just look at that. That is super high profile. Oh, and by the way, uh, before I forget, uh, clip positions are tip up as I have it here, tip down, and also left sided. So lefties, Kara Kara 2 is for you. Now, on this pocket clip, uh, and here's the Tenacious, Spyderco Tenacious, same deal really high profile and with this knife I was sitting in one of those camping chairs and when I stood up it hooked on on the edge by accident and pulled this clip up it was stuck up about 25 degrees or so not a big deal I just took it off bent it back with some pliers and you know a little Loctite put it back on put it back on so not a big deal but let me roll in the Kershaw Tremor Kershaw Tremor previously reviewed and look at this pocket clip I love this pocket clip. This is probably my favorite clip as, uh, you know, time of this video. Look how low profile that is. Never had a problem with it. Uh, I scrape my clips on everything. As you can see on the Tremor, the, you know, there's some paint missing there. So, but I've never had a problem catching it. Look at that lip in comparison. Really low profile. Loving that. Um, let's see here. Where am I going? All right, liners. Stainless steel liners. Get Mr. Uh, Streamlight Stylus Pro. Uh, milled out, partially, as good as they could. Uh, if they mill it out anymore, you know, it's just going to cost more in manufacturing, which is going to raise the price on us. So, you know, that's good enough for me. It is uh, four, and a, four and a quarter ounces, so, you know, that's good enough for me. Any, any more milling, uh, you're going to lose more weight, but it's going to cost more. It's going to be a higher price tag. The, uh, let's see, lockup is good. No movement whatsoever. What you hear is my ring hitting the liner when I did that. No movement uh, at all. F uh, forward, back, side, side. Let's get our blade centering. I'm trying to fly through this because i got a lot of information and not enough time. Sorry about that. Blade centering is good. Uh, it is uh, a little bit uh, toward the top. Go angling toward the top of your screen, but not touching. And that's good enough for me at this price point. So... Uh, deployment is going to be a little sluggish. Now, as far as just flicking it open, it's it's not going to happen. I have pretty big thumbs too. Maybe you can, but uh, you know, add a little flick of the wrist like that, and you're good to go. 
So with the right technique, it can be super, super fast out of the gate. Um, you know, like, here we go, the Spyderco Tenacious again. Um, you just see that? You just flick it straight out. And then uh, the Kershaw Nerf, or Blitz. Same thing. Super, super fast. These, of course, uh, are liner locks, though. So, the uh, deployment on the Caracara, when I first got it, was kind of gritty. When you open it, you can just feel it grind like there's sand in there or something. I'm thinking it's some type of uh, machining material, like uh, steel filings or, or G10 filings or something from manufacturer. A few drops of oil and just working it back and forth, uh, you know, opening and closing, and it, it cleaned itself out. Or it's, there's no problem with that anymore. Uh, you can see in there uh, phosphor bronze bushing. And one on the other side there as well. And let's come up on the blade here. Our blade steel is 8CR13 MOV. It's a mid-grade uh, Chinese steel. Uh, com comparable to AUS-8 or AUS-8. Which I believe AUS-8 is made in Taiwan. Correct me if I'm wrong. Anyways, um, I think the ATR-13 MOV is a little bit better. has better edge retention for me anyways, and it actually sharpens a little easier, which is counterintuitive, but uh, I don't know how that worked out, but it worked out for me. The, uh, let's see where we're at here. The, um... Went over jimping here. We got a good thumb ramp here. Now let's go into this here, this deployment hole. The, um, I guess you'd call it the bird hole, reminiscent of the spider hole. Here's the tenacious again. There you go. Now, I have a few, th I have a theory on this. Um, everyone sees something different, of course. Um, like it's a talon or a claw or, you know, whatever. Um, to me, this whole thing looks like a bird's head. And this, the blade is like the beak. This is the eye. I don't know. That's what I see. I don't know if there's an official whatever it's supposed to be or anything like that. But um, I was wondering, you know, I was looking at this online, if this hole affects the deployment at all. You know, because it's got that funky shape. And uh, I'm glad to report that it doesn't whatsoever. When you're deploying this blade, you don't even really touch that part. And I can kind of show you here on the other side. Kind of a weird angle, but as you're pushing up and then to the side. So you're never touching that part. So <clears throat> that's good to know, that you're good to go there on the deployment. Uh, back up on our blade here, we're uh, full flat ground. And vast improvement on the blade shape. It's kind of a leaf slash spear point, I guess. I don't know. But uh, the original Karakara, if you remember, kind of came here and then dipped down and then back up, and it just looked hideous. Sorry, uh, bird and spider co, I've got to say it. But that's good because you guys improved it with a Karakara too. Isn't that sweet? Look at that blade shape. Just reminiscent of the Endura. The entire knife reminiscent of the Endura. Just That blade is just awesome. That's what sold me on it. Uh, you know, a lot of other things too, but the blade shape is awesome. Uh, one thing, though, it does come straight down, and then when you get to the point here, the tip, it kind of takes a nosedive here. I mean, it would have been good if they just kept going straight all the way down, you know, to a nice sharp point. But you got to think of it too. It's going to reinforce the tip. The tip's going to be that much stronger because there's more metal on the end because they just, you know, they curved it down. Uh, tip is uh, not super sharp. The excuse me. The uh, the edge is though razor sharp out of the box. Uh, I'd almost even say Wolverine sharp if you know what I mean. But uh, anyways, um, there's your relief edge. Nice uh, long gradual relief edge. Perfect slicer. A lot of uh, real estate and er area to work here. Good sweep on the edge on the blade shape. Um, the durability on the 8CR13 MOV is, it's going to be, uh, like I said, a mid-grade steel. You need to take care of it, though. It will rust on you. Uh, I have gotten um, little spots of rust on it before. And, uh, yeah, I just polished those out. I actually use, uh, I think it's Bartender's Keeper or Bartender's Friend or something, something like that. I don't know. Maybe I'll do another video on that. 
but uh, you probably know what I'm talking about. Post a comment and uh, remind me. I've got it under my sink over here, but I can't think of it. So, but uh, let's see. Let's do a few size comparisons. Here's the Kershaw Tremor. Model 1950, previously reviewed, great knife. There you go, and tenacious, Spyderco tenacious there. So I kind of just line up the pivot screws here. And let's see, sorry I don't have the best camera angle. But there you go. There's your three there, and let's take this guy out and the Kershaw Blitz, or Kershaw Nerve. There you go. Boom. These two here, the Tremor and the Kara Kara 2, are very comparable. Uh, now, if obviously this is a bigger knife, the Tremor, but look at the handles. They're about the same length. And the blade is, the blades are the same length. They're both three and three quarters. But the difference here, say if you're looking at these two knives, is this is uh, four and a quarter ounces on the Kara Kara 2, and the Tremor is six ounces. <laughs> Great knife. And I actually like the weight on this knife. But just to kind of show you, you know, if you like a lighter knife, these are pretty close. It's just, uh... The uh, Tremor is uh, a lot heavier, a lot thicker, too. Uh, this is what I really like about the Kara Kara, too. Is look how thin that handle is in comparison to the Tremor. Uh, it just you, gives you a great grip. Maybe you have smaller hands. You know, that would be perfect for you, then. So, the uh, fit and finish on the Kara Kara 2 G10, we had a few issues. Now, the locking bar, and let me see if I can get in here. All right, good. You can see right there, right where the locking bar meets the thumb ramp, it's a, a little has a little bit of over travel. And I'll kind of move that to show you. See and yeah, so just a little bit there on other Kara Kara twos, other people's, it hasn't been a problem. So maybe that's maybe it's just mine or just a few of them. Um, it doesn't affect the knife at all. It's just uh, one of those things to point out, you know. And then also. The jimping. Take a look uh, at the jimping here on the thumb ramp. Let's see. Let me get my pointer out here. There we go. If you can see right here, it just looks really kind of chewed up. Now, the jimping is very functional. But it just looks a little ugly, a little marred, a little chewed up. But the function's there. That's what's important to me at this price. And you can all see the locking bar even more. So it has a little bit of over-travel. On the, on the other side, same thing. Now, the, this jimping issue with the Kara Kara 2, I guess, is pretty common. I guess most of the knives are like that. But very functional. As far as function alone, I probably would give it, I don't know, a 7 or an 8. Uh, a 10 or near 10. Nothing's a 10 to me would be this large jimping on the uh, Spyderco Tenacious. Look at that. I love that. That is just locks in incredibly well. So, review on this knife coming out soon, too. So, the Kara Kara 2 is going to come in at about $30, 25 in some places. If you look around, uh, great knife though. Great addition to any high value knife collection. That's made me very happy. It's taken everything I've dished at it, of course, within its use. You know, uh, you no, know, I don't abuse it. Don't go batoning, leaving it wet or anything like that. It'll serve you well. Great addition. So uh, that's about what I got for you this time. Of course, thank you for watching as always. Uh, i got a bunch more videos coming out. i got a bunch on there now. Go ahead and over to my channel and check them out. Uh, post a comment. Say what's up. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. See you next time.